Gentlemen, welcome to the Gird Up Podcast. My name is Charlie Ungemach, and this is the place where young men learn to be men after God's own heart. I'm glad that you've joined us. If you're a beginner, whoo, we got lots of knowledge to drop on your head. There's more than 300 episodes that are up now on this podcast. So go over to the podcast app, whatever podcast app you choose. Um, you're going to find us there. You're going to find a whole lot of information about what it means to be a man. You're going to be able to see me grow as a man and get closer to God and uh, you know, see my will conform to his a little bit more. Um, I make no, <laughs> make, make no assertions that I have it all figured out. Make no assertions that uh, I've got it right the first time. None of that is true. Um, I'm figuring out just like you guys are walking with Jesus. But um, every time we do a podcast like this, I uh, make sure I talk to Jesus first. Um, and I trust that his grace and mercy are involved in it, um, that I might speak the truth. I genuinely want to help men know the truth and that they might be free in the truth, as well as their women and children be free in the truth, because the, th- the truth sets people free. And today, <laughs> we're going to talk a little bit about freedom. I'm Really, we're going to talk about peace and rest is what we're going to talk about. And in order to have peace and to be at rest, you need to understand the freedom that you have. Before we do that, shout out to my big sister for this dope mug. It says hope and a future on it. Oh, it doesn't say it on that side. It says it on this side. She gave it to me right before I moved out here to Minnesota to go back to school. Uh, and at the time, I was like, eh, it's a little girly. But actually, I don't think it is at all. I think it's beautiful. Um, and uh, I've used it. There are a couple of times where I've used it every day for like two weeks just because it's now my favorite mug. Because every single day, it's a blessing and a reminder of my Savior's love for me and the fact that I'm here for a reason. It's part of my purpose. It's part of my destiny. And I'm going where my Savior leads me. He promises to give me a hope and a future. And that means I give my life to Him and let Him shape it and mold it as He pleases. Sometimes that means learning <laughs> languages you had no desire to learn. Um, but man, what a blessing that has been as well. It's so cool, man. And this is honestly, coming up to coming up to college is not an easy thing for me. It was not, especially the part where I had to resign my call and walk away from a ministry that I genuinely loved and enjoyed. Walking away from that was the hardest thing I had ever done up to that point. Um, Moving was then the next hardest thing I had ever done up to that point. Um, And then the first semester of college coming back was the hardest thing I had ever done. Um, Second semester wasn't as hard (laughs) for a couple of different reasons. One of which was that uh, I think I finally just, I mean, I had resigned myself to the Father's will, if that makes sense. Not that he, you know, came out of the clouds and said, if you don't go, I'm going to smite you. That's not true at all. And the Father definitely gives us free will, and he's given me free will. Um, but he laid it on my heart, this is something I should do. And this is the most, I've had, never had more peace about any decision I've ever made in my life than this decision to come up here and to do this. And this is something I'd sworn I would never do. Um, and that's not a call for all of you to drop everything and go be a pastor. God has not made us all to be pastors. He's made some men to be uh, preachers and teachers. He's also made some men to be plumbers and carpenters and and uh, you know mechanics and software designers and engineers and whatever else, grocery store managers. God has designed everybody for a different purpose, and no two purposes are the same. And there's a whole lot of things that a lot of awesome pastors do that I'm never going to be able to do. And I'm going to do some things that other pastors are going to look at me and be like, what on earth, how does he pull that off? It's the grace of God, man. It's what he's given me. It's the gift that he has given. I also forgot to talk about buying a cup of coffee. That's why I brought up the mug in the first place. If you want to help support the Gird Up podcast, you can go online. Go to the Gird Up website. That's Gird Up Ministries at um, it's girdupministries.com. Go to the support the podcast link and click on buy us a cup of coffee. What that's going to do is essentially make a $5 donation to the show. What that's going to do is help us pay for the things that are involved. As I said, I am in school, and uh, I'm broke, frankly. (laughs) I'm completely dependent on my Heavenly Father to provide what I need. I work as much as I can, get as much work done as I can, um, push some time into this, keep doing ministry, and I trust that Jesus will provide for me, and he has so far, and I praise him for it. Um, But if you are willing to donate and help make this process a little bit easier... Um, that's one way to do it. You can go buy us a cup of coffee, a $5 cup of coffee on the website. You can also donate on Patreon, or you can buy stuff from the Grid Up store. It's all there on the website. Go check it out. That link is in the description below. Today I want to talk about peace. 
Like I said, I've never had more peace about any decision, anything I've ever done than I have about this, about this process, even about doing this podcast. I've never had more peace about anything in my life. It's not to say that there aren't days where I'm like, man, what am I doing? Or days where I wish I was back where I was before. It doesn't mean that I have this perfect understanding of God's will for my life. I don't. Um, But peace is a significant part of who I am and what I'm doing because I know and trust the will of the Father. I know that my Father loves me that he guides me in green pastures, and even in dark valleys, he has a path laid out for me, and he is my comforter, my protector, and my guide. Um, and the fact that even in his promises, he tells us there's going to be dark passages, tells me I should be prepared for difficult times ahead. And quite frankly, just about every day as a Christian is difficult. It's very, very rare. I think I've had, I can count on one hand in the last year how many days I've had where I was just like, yep, what a good day. Like, all day long, everything about it was just good. And that's okay. That's not to say that I haven't had good days. I've had a lot of days where I got to the end of the day and said, Jesus, praise your name. That was wonderful. Thank you for that. But I can only name, I think, probably four or five days, because those days are generally very memorable, where just the day went well. I was joyful from beginning to end. Everything went as I planned or, or went better than I planned. You know, just like it was a good day, hands down, praise Jesus, everything was awesome. Well, there's a lot of days where it's tough and things are difficult. And praise Jesus because it's still what I needed. It still happens to be awesome. And and that kind of a peace comes only from a relationship with our Heavenly Father and with the consistent and passionate study of His Word. If you don't talk to Jesus and study His Word, you're never going to have any peace. And if you never have any peace, you're never going to find any rest. Rest is something that we don't... (laughs) Oh, man. Our culture does not value it very much. Like, we talk about vacations and things like that a lot. Um, And there are a lot of people that go on vacation, and that's a good thing. It's good to go on vacation. But even on vacation, like, there's all this pressure to get stuff done and do things while you're there, right? There's not a lot of... There's not a lot of people that are good at resting, and that's myself included. And I think as Christians, we get a little extra burden stacked on top of that um, because uh, we're we're made to be selfless, right? And we're we're called to be selfless by a Heavenly Father who himself was selfless. And that creates some pressure sometimes about what we should be achieving and what should we, we should be accomplishing um, with our time while we're here. Uh, but we forget that it's not you and I that do these great and wonderful things. It's not you and I that do these mighty works. You and I, left to our own devices, do only wickedness and sin. And so the good things we do that are laid out before us are laid out before us by our Heavenly Father. And it is only the Spirit living in us that enables us to do that. Which takes the pressure off of us to be doing things all the time. To be on top of it all the time. To be going, 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 going. On the other end, there's a lot of us that waste a lot of our time and never actually find rest because we're wasting so much time. Think about it. How much time do you spend on your phone every single day? Now, yes, you could. most people, it's four hours or more. Um, I'll admit that I'm on about three hours a day, and some of that is the gird up stuff, and that's a blessing, and I'm not going to stop. But I'm really struggling right now to spend valuable time on my phone and not to spend any extra time on my phone. Like, I am genuinely spending too much time on my phone, and I don't like it, and I'm praying about it every single day because I want it to end. But I also want to be faithful with the platform that my father has given me and the fact that the podcast keeps growing and my social media presence keeps going not that I have a large following or anything I don't Um, but the fact that thousands of people are listening and a lot of those people are also on either Facebook or Instagram and following me I think it would be foolish to throw that away and to just get rid of social media Um, But social media also is a massive temptation for me and a time waster. Um, And, man, it's just not good for a dude who's struggled with pornography. Man, that can be a death trap, right? Um, So it's it's just not good for me to waste a lot of time on Instagram or on my phone. Um, Think about how much time you waste on your phone. A lot of people will think about that time and say, man, think about all the good things I could have done with that two hours. And that's true. You could have. You would definitely get more done during the day if you'd put your phone down and didn't have a phone. If I didn't have a phone, I'd get more done during the day. I know I would. It's true. But my big greater concern is not productivity because the closer I am to the will of the Father, the easier it is for me to get stuff done anyway. Um, the more time I spend with Jesus, the less difficult it is to get done with my tasks every day. 
I find that very consistently. That's not to say that a miracle happens and all my stuff just gets magically done and I don't have to work hard. That's not true either. But the more time I spend with Jesus, um, the easier it is for me to get done the things that are laid before me to do, mostly because I'm not worried about anything that doesn't have anything to do with him. Um, and that makes my life a lot simpler. But it's not the productivity that, that I think is the most dangerous for young men in particular, actually for anybody, is it's the rest. Like, we spend our rest time sitting in front of a TV or paging through our phone a lot of times, right? Um, and, and that's not to say we should throw away TVs and phones. I love movies. I love TV shows. I love social media. I get great joy out of it, and they build me up. Like, I, I'm closer to God because of them a lot of times. But that's not, that doesn't mean that it's, they're not draining. Like, when you're looking at a screen, it is not restful for your mind or for your heart or for your body. Right? It causes your eyes to work very hard. It causes your brain to work very hard. And it's not actually very restful. So one of the things I've been focusing on um, this summer, especially in the second half of last school year, is making sure I take care of my body, my soul, and my spirit, like my mind, um, consistently. And I didn't do it perfectly at the end of the school year by, by any means. And I'm still not doing it perfectly now, but I'm getting better at it. It's just taking time to rest. Um, I have right now I'm actively working two jobs and doing some side jobs here here and there as well and so um, a lot of days I will be going for nine hours or so just going 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 for nine hours right which means at some point and there's no rest in those nine hours right I'm on and I'm working the entire time so um, what that means is I have to be really intentional about making time to rest because otherwise I'm going to come home, crash, go to sleep, whatever it might be, or sit in front of the TV and veg for an hour and then go to sleep, whatever it might be. And if I wake up in the morning and I'm, and I, and I don't get at it right away, um, then I have even less time, right? And so that starts to eat into my sleep, which makes me really tired and even more tired. And, and I just, it builds up over time and fatigue makes cowards of us all, man. It's hard to be strong when you're tired especially when you're tired for a long period of time. So what I do is I make sure I go to bed on time every single day. No, that most days. I, I need to get better at this. Um, but I try and go to bed early enough that I can get seven or more hours of sleep. Now, the optimum would be eight or more hours of sleep. I would love to get nine hours of sleep every night. I could sleep that long every night. Um, maybe I should with the level of activity that I do every day. But um, for sure, seven hours. Usually, I try and get eight hours. So I'll I'll have eight hours of downtime essentially, right? So from the time I lay down in my bed to the time I, my alarm goes off, I try to make that time eight hours. Doesn't mean I fall asleep right away, um, but I try to make that eight hours. And if I can do that consistently, I'm usually pretty good, right? I also put great stock and great value in naps. Now, I try not to take naps after like 5 p.m. because then I'll interfere with my sleep. But I have no qualms about taking a nap in the morning or in the afternoon, especially if I'm doing intellectual work. Um, so it's just like something that I'm doing. It's not something that I'm doing for somebody else necessarily. If I'm doing intellectual work and I'm having a hard time keeping my eyes open, man, set a 10-minute timer or a 25-minute timer on your phone and go to sleep. Just rest. Um, and when you wake up, you're going to be more productive and you're going to be able to get back at it. And what's happening while you sleep is your mind is restoring itself. It's going to make you think clearer, act writer. I know that's not a word. Uh, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to help you be more productive. Um, so instead of wasting an hour trying to accomplish something that only took 10 minutes, take a, take a nap and you'll be more productive when you're done. But the last thing that I think almost nobody does, it's something we need to do but almost nobody does, um, is spend time doing nothing. You heard me. Spend time doing nothing. Not even spending time in prayer necessarily. You should be spending time in prayer every single day. You should be spending time meditating on scripture every single day. Um, you should be spending unstructured time with God every single day. All those things are important, but so is complete and total rest. Now that's not me saying you shouldn't talk to Jesus while you're resting. You should be talking to Jesus all the time. But you should also have a separate prayer time um, that's different from your rest time, okay? Because prayer can be hard work. It should be hard work. What I'm talking about is, and I don't get this every day, but what I'm talking about is a half an hour, maybe 45 minutes of just me doing, accomplishing nothing. Just being, just existing, okay? Sometimes, especially this time of year, I'll make that out in the hammock in the backyard, just relaxing in a hammock 
Not thinking about anything in particular, just letting my mind wander, just finding rest. If it's been a pretty tough day at work, maybe I'll have a drink in my hand. Um, not that I'm getting buzzed or anything, but just having a drink, relaxing a little bit, and letting time pass, letting myself decompress, and letting myself just rest, okay? And a key part of that is the ability to quiet my mind. Now, the world will tell you to meditate, and I, I'm actually all for meditating. One of my favorite apps that I've talked about all the time is Brain Buddy. Uh, it actually teaches you to meditate, uh, and that's a, it's a useful skill in combating addiction and combating you know the, the lusts of the flesh. It's a useful skill. I do it often. But um, that's not even necessarily what I'm talking about. I'm just talking about being able to quiet your mind, and you will never be able to quiet your mind if you don't have peace through Jesus. Right? There's always going to be something stressing you out, something bothering you if you can't give it away to Jesus and let it go. So the number one way you're going to find rest is building your relationship with your Heavenly Father so that you can trust Him fully and just give your life over to Him so that He can lead you and guide you. When you can do that, you'll be just fine. Second thing is you have to actually build it into your day. It's not going to happen incidentally. Right? If you're just like going with the flow, you're going to end up watching TV or paging through your phone. So every once in a while, like I'll do it every two or three days where I'll just say, nope, this afternoon, this is what I'm doing. Or like, nope, tomorrow I'm not waking up and going to play basketball. I'm going to have a quiet morning where I can just relax. Right? Tomorrow morning I'm not going to the gym. I'm just going to have a quiet morning where I'm going to relax. Or I've got an hour between jobs tomorrow. I'm not doing anything. I'm going to go home. I'm going to sit in a recliner. I'm going to put on some music and just relax, right? That's another thing I love to do while I'm just relaxing. Just put on some music, especially some Jesus music, like one of my favorite albums, um, and just listen to the music. I'm not thinking about anything. I'm not paging through my phone. A lot of times I'll sit down, get comfortable, and then throw my phone to the other side of the room so I can't touch it or look at it without putting in effort because I know I'll be too lazy to go over there and get it. All right, just relaxing and letting it go. And what that's going to do is it's going to help you recharge. It's going to help you... Um, physically restore so you're not physically tired all the time. Nobody wants to be physically tired all the time. Like I said, fatigue makes cowards of us all. And it's also going to help you kind of reflect and heal. And, and, and all the things that are going on in your mind, they'll work themselves out. But you have to give yourself the quiet time to do so. Another thing I love to do sometimes is just open up all the car windows and go for a drive through the country. Not going anywhere in particular, finding roads I've never been on before, just driving. Just driving. No music on, windows down, it's quiet, just driving. Now, I know I'm wasting gas, and it's probably not good for the environment, but it's an opportunity to decompress and to know my Savior better. In years past, when I lived by my grandparents who have a house on a lake, I would be fishing. Go out and just go fishing. Just go fishing. Throw a line in the water. It doesn't matter if you catch anything or not. In fact, some of my best fishing sessions have been days where I caught one or two fish and nothing else because I got the satisfaction of catching a fish, but I also got the quiet time to just relax, to just exist. And as I'm, in my nature as a Christian, when I'm just being and existing, my Savior is with me. So I'm just there with Jesus. Um, think, about, think about it this way. When you're in love with somebody, you just want to be with them. And sometimes that means doing things, and we all should do things, right? We should go on dates. We should be intentional about courtship. We should be intentional about all that. But sometimes you just want to be together. And, and and not just physically be together, but just be alongside each other. Like just being together. Sometimes that's what you need, right? Laying in a hammock, enjoying the sunshine. Sitting on a beach, soaking up the rays. Nothing to accomplish today. Going for a drive. Whatever it might be. Just existing together. What a blessing to be able to do that. What a blessing it is. But a lot of times we don't go and seize that opportunity. So this isn't even really like a spiritual experience or something that I'm trying to need to try and go pursue. It's just like we all need to rest. And as young people, we think we're invincible. We think we don't need to rest. But if you're going to grow, if you're going to know Jesus better... If you're going to be a man after God's own heart, at some point you're going to have, have to find rest. And that rest starts with the study of Scripture because Jesus says, I'm the one that gives rest. Here you will find rest for your souls. As a deer pants for water, so I pant for the Lord. I'm not going to find rest until I am refreshed in Him. So make that your priority. First, you're going to be refreshed in Jesus. But then take some unstructured time and just exist. 
right? And your thoughts are naturally going to lend themselves to the things of God because he's such a big part of your heart and your life. He is your heart and your life. But just exist, man. Just be. Don't let the world tell you you got to be moving all the time. Don't have too much stuff going on to just exist and just to be. Take some quiet time, fellas. I know it's what you need. God bless you all. We'll see you next time. I love you. Be the man God created you to be. Gentlemen, that's the end of the video. That's all we got for you this time. So on behalf of all those involved in creating, editing, producing, and publishing this content, thank you for being a part of the Gird Up family. If you're not listening to the Gird Up podcast yet on whatever platform is your favorite podcast platform, you need to go subscribe right now and start listening today. There you will find over 300 episodes of interviews, man talk, and all kinds of other things all geared at helping you become a man after God's own heart. It's a great resource. Go use it wisely. We also ask that you would consider supporting Gird Up Ministries by shopping at the store at girdupministries.com, buying a shirt like this one or stickers for the back of your car, your water bottles, whatever. You can support us on Patreon by donating. Just look up Gird Up Ministries there on Patreon. Or you can go to girdupministries.com and buy us a cup of coffee. That's just a one-time $5 donation. Anything you donate goes right back into making content like this for men like you. Make sure you're following us on social media, particularly Facebook and Instagram. Like all of our posts, share them, get the word out to the world that we can and are ready to be men after God's own heart. With all that being said, gentlemen, I love you. I deeply care about you. I hope that this has been a blessing on your journey towards Christian manhood. Now go, gird up, and be the man that God created you to be. We'll see you next time.